go. Reporting live from the cheap seats. Get your beer here. This is Section 341 on CFSL Radio with Derek Gregg. Let us breathe. This nice lay back beat. Not saying much yet. Enjoy the vibes. Vibration. All right. This is section 341. I'm your host, Derek Gray, on CFSL Radio. Week six is in the books. We're gonna find out some things that we all wanted to know this week. Separate the haves from the have nots, the contenders from the pretenders. Find out if the Sharks remain undefeated this week, as well as Clemson Tigers, and if the teams that are trying to make a push for playoff contention make that push. Come on, week six. All right, so starting off, we had Texas versus Auburn. You wondered if Auburn could capitalize off their win last week, and if Texas could keep the ball rolling and just keep things going smoothly as they have been pretty much all season. Texas came out on top, beating Auburn 34-23. Jimbo Smithers showed up as he usually does with 10 plus tackles. And Ray Tatum, the great one, had 401 yards passing and three touchdowns. Auburn fought hard all game long. And Jokic had 398 yards passing, two touchdowns, but two interceptions is what proved crucial. The Tigers, they fought all game long and they were never truly out of the game but texas just proved to be too much cross ferry to third cf3 showed up in a major way with 191 yards receiving and an insane average and you knew that coming into it that auburn had a tall task on their hands but they were up for the occasion and they're up for the challenge they didn't bend break or fold by any means but Texas just proved to be the better team that night. And coming up next, Texas, who moves to 5-1 and one in the SEC and 2-0 and oh in conference, winners of their last four games. They have a date with the Hurricanes of Miami, and Auburn has a date with the Clemson Tigers. Auburn is now 3-3, three and three, but still holding on to that final spot in the playoffs, and they'll look to get back on track with a win next week. Now, next up, is what I think was the game of the week. This is not up for debate. Don't debate me. Debate the people that are trying to run for president. Anyway, so Oregon and Ohio State was a tremendous game. The Sharks showed a tremendous effort on defense. The game went into overtime. The Sharks came out on top, 37-34. Despite what the score was, it was actually more of a defensive battle than you might have thought. The Ducks, they held their own for being as maligned as they've been more or less all season with them being under a microscope. Uh, Kai Markston and the crew, they uh, held the Buckeyes without an offensive score for much of the game. It was mainly field goals from their kicker that kept them in it. And of course, that defense, Juan Cantu, Martavis, Marriott, Kevin Brackett, and Tom Pence. You can't come up short against these guys. You can't just think that you can loaf for kind of lollygag here and there and think that the Sharks won't make you pay for it. Oregon, they gave a wonderful concerted effort. Devontae Cribs had an all right game, much better than the game that he had against Michigan. Cody Betts came in with some clutch catches. Jimmy Tickle had a long score, which kept the Ducks in the game. And the defense, they did their job, mostly the whole game. You can't fault the Oregon defense too much this game. The reason why I say too much is because when you have chances to ice the game, you ice the game. Kevin Brackett had a crucial pick six, which put the Buckeyes on top at that time. The game was back and forth. It, like I said, it ended up going in overtime. The Ducks had a chance to win it with a kick at the end of the game. They pushed it wide right. And then 
after going into overtime, both teams scored, and then the Ducks kicked the field goal. The Ducks had a chance to ice the game with an interception. XGA, he won't skate with his arm. He's good with his legs, but he's not Patrick Mahomes, to say the least. But he's not skating with his arm. And he threw a duck to Kyle Markston. When it's time to make big plays, you have to secure the ball. Excuses aren't going to fly. Kai just didn't make the catch. It kept the Buckeyes driving, and they made the game-winning touchdown with Frost Carson, who had 33 carries for 178 yards. When it comes down to it, when it's down to the moment of truth, you have to rise to the occasion. The Ducks almost had it, but they didn't wind up with the win. Buckeyes still undefeated. The Ducks are now 4-2, and two, but they're still second in the Big Ten in the playoff race. And coming up next week, the Buckeyes have the Washington Huskies, and the Oregon Ducks have the University of Penn State. Fun fact, a few months ago, I adopted a Husky. She tore my house up. Wouldn't get along with the other pets. Wouldn't get along with the kids. Fam. All around bad situation. And on that note, we're going to take our first break. Go pay some bills. All that jazz. Once again, this is Section 341 with Derek Gregg. And we'll be back after a message from our sponsor. Hello, how's your life going? Good? Wrong. Complacency is the first step towards everything falling apart. That's what you need us for. The Problem Pointer Outers. We'll come into your house, inspect your life, inspect your kids, inspect your wife. You might have a secret chimney you don't know about. Don't want that burning down on your love. Your child might grow up to be a football hooligan. We know the warning signs. Did you know that even the smallest speck on your skin could turn out to be a dangerous parasite? It can. Call us, the Problem Pointer Outers. We'll help you before your life comes crashing down around you. The Problem Problem Pointer Outers. It's Section 341 with Derek Gregg. All right. Welcome back to Section 341 on CFSL Radio. I'm Derek Gregg. And this portion of Section 341 is being brought to you by Phillips Milk of Amnesia, the over the counter remedy that works so well you will never remember why you used it in the first place. Remember, Phillips Milk of Amnesia, sponsor of Section 341. All right, back at it with more recaps. Washington playing against a team who's fighting for their playoff lives. It was a must-win game, and if they did not win, Notre Dame was going to be out of playoff contention. Notre Dame versus Washington is next on our list. Joe Pintoa had 31 carries for 168 yards and a touchdown. Digger Graves for Washington. Did his job once again with 11 tackles. The Irish squeaked by late with a 25-23 victory. You can't count these guys out for long. The Raging Bull, Leo, Asiata, and the crew, they just find ways to win, no matter what, seemingly. Washington, tough, tough loss, but they got a chance to get it back on track next week against the Buckeyes of Ohio State. You wonder if they'll be able to pull it together and get it back on track. I'm curious to see what Doug Ole and Ron Dane Jr. and the crew have in store to go up against the Sharks defense. The Sharks, they got past the Ducks by the skin of their teeth, but hey, in the CFSL, anything can happen from week to week, baby. You know what time it is. I think the X factors in that game will be Tom Pence and XGA for the Buckeyes. Frost Carlson had a big game against the Ducks this past week, but I think XGA is going to have to show me something next week against Washington. And I think for Washington, the X Factors will be Jace Roster, Digger Graves, and yes, the one, the only, Raekwon Dong. If they just find some kind of way to get him the ball or help to have him to block to spring Dane Jr., I think that Washington can pull the upset next week. Up next, we have Clemson and Florida. Florida. I guess you could say that they're half the team that Clemson is because they got shellacked 40 to 20. Clemson came out and they didn't bite their tongue and they didn't hold back. They didn't play nice. They came out and they hit Florida in the mouth immediately from the word go. Listen, Clemson came out on a mission. And if you're going to take Clemson down, then you're going to have to bring your lunch pail and come prepared to play. Kingston Fox had one touchdown and three interceptions. That pretty much tells you all that you need to know about 
for the performance. Mike Chadwick had 30 carries for 232 yards for Clemson and three touchdowns. He outscored Florida by himself. It's it's amazing. But, um, yeah, that's what happened. I was going to do an in-depth recap on this game, but there's not really a need to because, I mean, Florida didn't show up. Florida didn't show up, and Clemson just kind of ran through them, and so I guess it's just on to next week. So, on that note, we're going to take another break, take care of some bills and all that good stuff, and we'll be right back with the last two games recaps of week six. We'll be right back after these messages, and this is Derek Gray on Section 341, and this is CFSL Radio. Woody Chuck's Tree Shuck Bark Removal and Wooden Sculpture Supply Emporium has all the right tools for your tree shaping needs. Woody Chuck's been shucking trees since before you were born and loves to lend a helping hand to the blossoming wood sculpturist. Learn from the best. How much wood could Woody Chuck shuck? A lot if you're willing to pay for it. This is a sports show hosted by a former All-State player, band player. But he does have some pretty warm takes. It's Section 341 with Derek Gregg. This portion of Section 341 is being brought to you by Honest Ed's Used Cars. The only to use cars backed by Ed's exclusive end of the century guarantee. Yes, if your Ed used car breaks down within the first 30 days of purchase, Ed guarantees that he will repair it sometime before the end of this century. That's Honest Ed's Used Cars. And remember, we wouldn't call him Honest if we didn't think it would be good for business. All right, let's go ahead and finish up these recaps for week six. Ah. And before I get too far into it, Florida has TCU next week and Clemson has Auburn. So TCU and Miami. The over-under was, I think, 64 and a half. And I think Miami was favored by, I think, six and a half or seven. But um, both of those things didn't happen. We got way below the under. And a winless TCU picked up their first victory of the year over Miami in overtime, uh, 22 to 19. It was more or less a field goal fest uh, throughout the game, but Jose Bueno, King Twix, Maximilian Mack, Buster Bam Bam Bates and the crew were unable to get it done. Uh, Michael Kovach, Jared Tatonis, and Dakota Adok came through and they made it happen. And also, DJ Donald, a brand new signee for TCU, sir, you showed out. You had a wonderful game. I think you had two sacks, and that is a great debut for someone in their first game. So welcome to the CFSL, good sir, and we hope to see you here and have you here a lot more often. And last but not least on our recap list is what some would have termed the Futility Bowl, but... We all know here in the CFSL that no games are gimmies and that no teams tank or give up around here. So this is simply just two teams trying to overcome a bit of adversity, just trying to find their first win, Michigan and Penn State. Michigan came out like a team possessed, Dewey Ainge. He was 19 for 20 in the first half. I think he threw for three touchdowns in the game. Adam Croft had 24 carries for 82 yards and three scores. Miles Freeman had 11 tackles and a pick. And Michigan outclassed Penn State 38-26. But by no means is Penn State a pushover. They've been in overtime, I think, for three or four of like their first couple games or whatever. So... I mean, you know that Penn State is coming in and they're going to be hard-nosed and they're not going to quit. They're not going to – they're not lying down for anybody. And one thing that you have to know about competition here in the CFSL is going to be fierce and it's going to be a tough out for you every night no matter what. Hats off to Michigan and to TCU for getting their first wins of the year. And with that said, let's go ahead and take it on home. (laughs) 
So week seven. And so we have coming up next week, we got Clemson and Auburn. That's gonna be an amazing game. We're gonna see if Mark Calloway and the and the rest of the crew and OPP can take down Javon Mack, Mike Chadwick, and Clemson. That's gonna be an Auburn and Jordan Hare State. Then we got Michigan and Notre Dame next week. We're gonna see if Michigan can keep their playoff hopes alive going up against the Fighting Irish, who are also trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. If I'm not mistaken, I think if the Fighting Irish lose and if the Huskies win, I think the Fighting Irish may be out of contention for the playoffs this year. But that's even more incentive for Joe Pantoja and the rest of the crew to come out and strap their chance traps on and bring their A game. That's going to be in South Bend, Indiana. And we got um, Washington at Ohio State. We got Doug Oley, we got Ron Day Jr. seeing if they can take down this Sharks defense who's been on fire all year long. They have had a bad game and they've had very few missteps all year long. We got the Hurricanes in Texas on the docket. We got uh, Ray Tatum seeing if they can just keep their high street going on and the Hurricanes trying to see if they can get back on the winning track. We got Florida seeing if they can pick up their second win of the year going up against TCU. TCU is trying to pick up their second win of the year also, trying to see if they can keep their momentum going. And we got Oregon and Penn State. The Ducks are going to try to sew up a playoff berth upcoming with a win over Penn State. I want to thank all y'all for listening, for rocking with me. I'm Derek Gregg. I'm Swaggers and Bear on the Discord chat. Y'all want to drop a line and give, give me feedback, let me know. Thank y'all for riding with me. Let's go full force in the week seven. Dead Greg, this has been section 341 on CFSL Radio. Bless up and have a great weekend, y'all. I'm going to get some pot roast. All right, peace. This has been section 341 with Derek Gregg. Thank you for listening.